Hello guys, so I just took my morning walk today and uh, I just thought I wanted to do a video for this book. This is Marina Lewitska's uh, We Are All Made of Glue. Um, I don't know, the, the inspiration just came <laughs> while taking the morning walk. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to say that I like this book. Uh, yeah, I, I actually like, I liked it more than like. I, I loved it. Okay. <laughs> that was awkward. Anyway, um, I kind of gave this book five stars because I really liked it. Uh, this is my third uh, Marina Lewitska book. Um, and I would say this is probably my most favorite book. The first one I read was uh, A Short History of Tractors in Ukrainian. I thought that was delightful. But I would say that that was only about four stars or so. This one certainly deserves more. But one thing that I don't really understand is, you know, when I, when I go to when I go to Goodreads, and I found out that the rating for this book, uh, the overall average rating is not very high. I think it's about three point four to three point five, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then I also found out that. Um, the ratings for other Luitska's book uh, books um, they're fairly on the low low side as well what I personally consider as low would be 3.5 and below because usually when I uh, try to read books that are rated 3.5 stars and below usually I would be disappointed in those books um, even 3.6 feels kind of um, and precarious to me, uh, but it's it's kind of different with Luitska's books because I tried you know her other books as well and I enjoyed them and so I definitely feel that there's some kind of uh, disagreement between my taste and also the average rating. But yeah, it certainly boggles my mind why um, her books are generally rated that low, and I kind of um. Uh, browse through the reviews as well um, and I could I guess I could certainly see why there are certain kind of like a uh, common uh, common thing that people comment on that would cause them to rate uh, the book particularly this one uh, a bit lower but uh, but yeah I guess you know I, I'm just kind of mention those later but first um, what this book is about so the story takes place sometime you know, in the present time, in uh, in London. So we have this uh, this woman whose name is uh, Georgie. She lives with uh, her husband and her son. Uh, she also has a daughter, but the daughter is, uh, I think, she is already like kind of like a uh, older teenager. She's in school, uh, something like that. And um, at the start of this book, we see Georgie uh, having having a quarrel with her husband, and they sort of just. Uh, decides to separate. So the husband moves out and lives with his friend. And so in her house, Georgie lives with the with her with her son. Um, and so of course, you know, we see this marriage crumbling at the beginning of this book. And uh, it is around that time that Georgie uh, has a chance encounter with her neighbor named uh, Mr. Shapiro. And Mr. Shapiro is an older. Um, She's an elderly woman, and her age is something that she does not really reveal. So Georgie does not really know how old she really is, but she lives alone in this like really big but crumbling mansion, and uh, she lives with many cats. Um, so yeah, that's that's gonna be like a running gag in this book. Um, at first, Georgie is kind of like reluctant to sort of uh, make a kind of like make a relationship start a relationship, friendship with Mr. Shapiro because, uh, you know, uh, she's she's not really, like, in this state of mind to be, like, uh, going out and <laughs> mingle and make friends because the things that is happening in her own marriage and household. But eventually, Georgie sort of becomes, like, a, a friend to Mrs. Shapiro, who sort of is quite lonely in her big house. Um... And so one day, Mrs. Shapiro, uh, ha, you know, she has an accident. She she falls, and she is uh, she's you know, she ends up at a hospital, and it is there at the hospital that, um, at the advice of a 
particularly sh seemingly shady uh, social worker that you know who suggested that Mr. Shapiro should be uh, should should live in an old old folks home instead instead of uh, you know living alone in her big mansion and Georgie who visits Mr. Shapiro at that time at the hospital she feels that something weird is going on especially when she goes to Mr. Shapiro's home to get her ID and all that her documents she finds out that the social worker is outside with another almost also kind of like shady figure um, just kind of like talking and plotting something outside the house and she she is kind of suspicious that something weird is possibly going on in the background and it's related to um, um, Mrs. Shapiro's property and also her um, her you know her health condition and all that uh, so yeah it is it is from there that the story starts uh, Georgie just kind of gets into this investigative mode while at the same time you know not only she's investigating what is really going on with these people and uh, Mrs. Shapiro's property at the same time she also comes across bits and pieces of uh, Mrs. Shapiro's uh, past based on her experience in the in Mrs. Shapiro's house uh, based on the pictures that she sees, uh, some sort of letters that she comes across with, and um, she become you know as she becomes tighter with Mr. Shapiro, becomes a closer friend to her. She gradually learns more about Mr. Shapiro's history, well, when she was younger, her history with the house, and also her kind of like um, her love life in the past and how her history sort of has some ties to the Holocaust and also the uh, Palestine-Israeli conflict. And later, Georgie would also encounter a uh, few more characters who seemingly have some ties with uh, the um, Israeli-Palestine conflict as well. Um, the story is very entertaining, I would say. It is mostly kind of like quite comedic. There are so many hilarious things going on in this book. Um, you know, overall it's just a really, really entertaining story. And uh, reading this one, I actually sort of kind of, you know, I, I, I breezed through it. It, you know, I read it really fast. I think I read it in less than one week, even though the length of this book is about 400 pages. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think that's already like the first sign that suggests that this book is a good one because if a sluggish reader can read it that fast, <laughs> then, um, yeah, I, I definitely suggest you guys to pick this book up. But, um, yeah, more reasons as to why I like this book. Um, I really like the fact that, okay, first of all, I, I, I'm somewhat biased towards uh, books that have a protagonist who is a um, a woman in her late 20s or 30s or early 40s or even 40s who is probably facing some kind of personal crisis. Um, maybe it's a relationship crisis or a marriage crisis. Uh, something that sort of just makes her feel like, it, uh, you know, pushes her to become a bit insecure about herself. I mean, in short, I really like uh, insecure characters because they feel relatable. And um, when you read insecure characters, you, you you feel that there is, you know, there is potential. Like, um, there are many ways the author can take, you know, the can, 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 you know, can plot the trajectory for that character. And I feel that it's really interesting to start with a with a with a character who is somewhat um, having having this moment of low self esteem, and um, you know that is something that we experience a lot. That is something that I experience a lot as well. And it's you know and it's relatable, and uh, and it, you know at the same time. Often these characters, when they when they have like low confidence, they would get to the point in which they would make self-deprecating remarks. 
<laughs> and that is another charm of this book as well. So we have this woman, Georgie, who is not exactly sure how she should like lead her life. Like what is she supposed to do? Um, she is separated from her husband, but at the same time, she is conflicted about this separation and she is not sure what she should do next, whether she should move on or whether she should get back to her husband, whether she should find um, other other guys. And I think this is another part that is really interesting because, um, you know, we have this like female character in this book who has a, who has children, who is literally living with a son. And at the same time, she is also kind of like constantly thirsty. <laughs> for other characters as well and it's and it's sort of like a running gag in this book that um Georgie would kind of finds other men to be attractive or um she would purposely go to a kind of like a hardware store or something like a Home Depot kind of store just so that you know she could be in the presence of you know those manly men <laughs> And it's just really interesting. And um, she later would also um, encounter some characters who are real estate agents who are just so hot. <laughs> or at least she thinks that they are so hot that, you know, she, at the, while she thinks that they are acting like really shady, like they're, they're being super suspicious, at the same time, she is super attracted to them. And... I don't know, it, it is written in a way that feels organic and it's written in a way that feels, um, that makes it seem like this character is an awkward character. Uh, it's written in a way that I can certainly understand why she feels that way, why she feels that kind of um, conflicted feelings towards these characters. Um, and, you know, the, the end result is just kind of... it. It, it's droll. It's it's funny. <laughs> so um, another thing that I noticed while I was reading the reviews on Goodreads is that um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, this book mentions the um, the historical events such as Holocaust and also uh, the the conflict uh, in the Middle East, and uh, these two events are like. Uh, big events and uh, the conflict is still happening right now obviously and one of the one of the criticisms that many of the reviews um raise is that it you know this book does not really address those historical events in in ways that are like really deep uh i suppose not really in a uh in a tone that is appropriate which i think is probably something like a more solemn or serious uh, or a bit of a grave tone while addressing these uh, events. Um, it seems like this book uh, sort of treats those events kind of flippantly in a way. And I would certainly agree that this book kind of treats those events in ways that are not as serious as uh, many people uh, uh, consider these events to be. And maybe that sort of um, kind of, I don't know, the, you know, that does not really sit well with other people. And uh, yeah, I, and I could certainly understand that, that point of view. But at the same time, I also feel that um, this book, even though it contains um, plenty of mentions of those events, particularly because many of the characters in this book have ties to those events. Um, at the same time, this book is like a domestic fiction through and through. It does not try to be a historical fiction, even though it has a significant historical um, uh, bits in it, but it, it seems like it does not even try to want to become a historical fiction. Um, I don't think this book even wants to become or try to be some kind of a historical literature or even literature in a way based on the writing style. This book is, it feels like a, uh, it feels like a domestic fiction, which focuses mostly on what is going on between, 
uh, you know, the relationships between various characters, especially the ones the main character consider to be her family and uh, friends. And I would say this book, Mrs. Shapiro would eventually just kind of consider, um, you know, uh, Georgie, Georgie, Georgie sort of just uh, considers Mrs. Shapiro to be um, her family as well. And uh, yeah, it's, I would say that's the focus of this book. It's about domestic fiction and how Georgie is c kind of trying to rescue Mrs. Shapiro from all of the possible sinister plot that is happening in the background and um, how she kind of deals with the with the knowledge of uh, the backstory of various characters including Mrs. Shapiro in this book and how all that just kind of helps her to make better you know relationship with these characters and even possibly um, help her in you know um, in uh, making a better relationship with her own family as well so uh, it it definitely has more of that as a focus it's very grounded and the scope in a way be even though georgie uh, learns about things that happen in other lands and other times from the characters backstories but uh, it is very grounded. It's very much focused on what is happening to Georgie right now. Her marriage issues, her dealings with uh, with the real estate agents that are possibly trying to swindle um, money from Mr. Shapiro, and also her friendship with Mrs. Mrs. Shapiro, and uh, those are the focus. And uh, I feel that also something similar to this is that. Um, Georgie's husband is, you know, is someone who is uh, portrayed as uh, someone who wants to make change, a big change to the world. And I find that this point is really interesting, even though uh, Georgie's husband is not like shown a lot in this book. But we kind of know that he works for a particular project that aims to introduce a... Uh, a good you know a, a change to the world and it's and it's really as vague as that we don't really know what kind of change but it's kind of like a project that has a noble goal or something like that and it is so in you know it's very much in contrast with who Georgie is a person she works from home she writes for an um, adhesives publication just writes articles and stuff like that and uh, sh her life is very much focused on what's going on at her home what's going on with her with her kids and also her neighbors um so there's definitely this contrast going on between um you know one person trying to make a big change like, on a grand scale and another person who is just sort of trying to figure things out on a more personal level and i feel that this book the approach is you know it it sides more on georgie's side it it sort of approaches the idea of human relationship and human peace uh, on a smaller scale. So going back to um, you know uh, the you know, the criticisms that people think that uh, this book does not really go very deeply into the historical events, and I think for me personally, I think that this book just kind of wants to uh, show us that. You know, it's it's great and it's noble to have goals, um, you know, in order to, you know, to introduce peace to the world, you know, in terms of uh, trying to come up with solutions or whatever in order to help solve these um, uh, global issues. But what if, what if a person, you know, starts small? What if a, a person just starts with something that happens at their own home? something uh you know starts a relationship with the neighbors and you know just pretty much make relationships with those people forge good relationships introduce peace that way which i certainly think is the message of this book um starting small is always a more practical solution for everybody instead of just sort of um one day coming up with an with an idea to um to introduce peace to the whole world or one big region or something like that 
And um, yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why this book is kind of endearing to me. The book's title is We Are All Made of Glue, and throughout this book you're gonna see a lot of references to different types of glue, how different types of glue works, um, basically the uh, historical origins of so many kinds of glue, and uh, and also, I mean, Georgie works for an adhesive publication company, and she writes articles about glue, and the story is all about uh, making that human connections. So uh, it's uh, it's going to be like a really uh, recurrent theme in this book. And I think the symbolism over there, I think it's really obvious, you know, glue and relationships, um, you know, bringing people together. I think the symbolism is there. It's, it's, it's literally, you know, as as subtle as getting hit by a train but I think that at the same time it feels also kind of charming as well to have that kind of symbolism just sort of uh chove down your throat <laughs> so um yeah I think uh those are kind of like my reasons as to why I like this book and also probably give you an idea as to why I find it so puzzling to see um, you know, this book receiving, uh, uh, you know, ratings that I would consider low on Goodreads. But um, if you have not read any of Luitska's books, um, I would suggest that you try this one. Um, or, you know, in any case, I, I would definitely suggest that you try this book as well if you are interested in something that is uh, relaxing or uh, something that just just kind of makes you feel warm inside, makes you feel kind of happy. Uh, I certainly felt happy reading this and I really enjoyed it. So um, yeah, definitely check this out. So uh, with that, I'm going to end this video. So until then, I'll see you again in a different one. So take care. I think that's a lot of so's. <laughs> um, take care. Thanks for watching and bye.